Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what is resilience and uh, how we think about it here at this Stockholm Resilience Center. Uh, resilience is to us uh, more of a lens of uh, looking at things as, as a way of, of uh, trying to understand how people and the envir their environments interplay and interact in an increasingly globalized society basically. So by using the framework of resilience we, we have a chance to ask new questions and also hopefully get new ideas about these type of interactions. So today I will give you some examples of, of what we mean by, by resilience. I will start first with a little metaphor uh, from uh, the art world with uh, Henri Matisse when he was commissioned an art piece to, uh, uh, to an art collector in Philadelphia. His name was Alfred Barnes. And he rented a church for a year and he uh, developed a triptych of, uh, that was supposed to be put up in the ceiling of, of uh, this uh, art museum. He sent it away, he was really pleased with it. But when it came there, they discovered that it was a little bit too big. The guy who worked with Barnes had made the wrong measurement of, of, the, of the piece. Normally then he would have just cut it up and say that let's fill it in. But Matisse refused to do that. So he rented the church for another year and uh, started to work on these triptychs. And in that process he discovered the decoupage, the clippings, which has then been very famous, uh, famous for and influenced a lot of, of art later on. So that shows us how some small disturbances, periods of, uh, of rapid change, can interact with periods of gradual change and create innovation and novelty. So that's one of the core elements of, of resilience thinking. What I'm going to talk a bit more about today is other th three other concepts. It's persistence, uh, and it's, uh, it's adaptability, and it's tra transformability. Give you two examples of that. So, the, so I'll start with one from the, the ecological side, from uh, forest, for example. So think, think of the, about that. You have a forest, a big forest area like this, and inside the forest, it burns. So you, there's a shock coming in, or disturbance coming into the forest, and it starts to burn here. Then there will be trees and seeds here inside the forest that we start to rebuild it, but it will also be a lot of interactions from outside the forest area, like, like birds bringing in seeds or other seeds coming in, the water flows flowing in here, to rebuild the whole forest again. So in that sense, that little patch that burned becomes resilient because it has the broader forest that supports it. But if this whole forest then is exploited for different reasons, maybe agriculture, it may be cities growing up or industries, all over the place here. And the same thing happens later on. It may not be able to rebuild the forest again because it has lost its sources of resilience in the broader landscape. And then the whole forest may, may tip over and, and uh, shift into another type of system. So persistence adaptability is about, is about this whole thing, that you stay on developing like a forest, persist like a forest and adapt all the time on that pathway of development. If you, if you, if you lose the resilience of that path of development, you can tip over into another type of system. So, so that's the example of persistence and adaptability. And transmobility is actually when you shift the whole thing into another type of system. So let, let me give you an example that is more from the human and environment side on, on uh, adaptability and transmobility. So if you, if you think about coastal management, and if you go to the country of Chile, uh, the coastal resources were fairly overfished and, and uh, they had a hard time uh, collaborating in, in uh, sustaining the flow of, of, uh, of fish and shellfish from the coastal areas. So they, they were in this type of situation, but it was not a very desirable situation. But they couldn't really get out of it. They were sort of trapped in that way of behaving. Uh, 
they, they persisted and they tried to adapt, but in a, in a place that you didn't want to be. But then Chile was faced with a very turbulent period of dictatorship, very, very bad in many, many respects. But during that period, several people who were engaged in the fisheries uh, came together and started to develop a vision for what could happen after that turbulent period was over. And they used that end of that turbulent period, the end of Pinochet area, as a window of opportunity to, to transform the whole coastal management into a situation which improved things quite a lot. And now they have this fisheries that is fairly sustainable, much better, and supplies much more, much more revenue for, for the local people than what they had before. So that's an example of a transformation, a political shock in this sense, that may break down old structures, and it may be very painful, but it's something we'll make come out of it later on. So if we think about that as a transformation, and uh, we think about it as the, at, at the globe uh, uh, as a whole, uh, we're right now in a, in, in, a, in a very intertwined social ecological system globally, where people are shaping not only local and regional environments, but also the planet as a whole, basically. And uh, we also know that the planet has fluctuated back and forth over history, and it's on, only in the last 10,000 years that the climate and the conditions on Earth have been such that we have been able to explode, become farmers, expand our agriculture, develop civilizations in the way they have done. So that's what we look upon as the global basin of attraction, or the global resilience where we would like to be. But obviously, it's very hard for us to, to be there if we continue the business as usual as we have done today. So therefore we need to transform at local and regional scale to stay in that global resilience, basically. So I think that's a little flavor of, of uh, how we think about uh, the interaction between persistence, adaptability and transformability. Uh, and I can recommend a little piece we wrote in November in Ecology and Society, where we try to summarize that.